Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Hall and this is your New Year reading for 2017. It's a beautiful new day and a beautiful new beginning for us all as we embark on a brand new phase of our journey. Anytime we enter into something new symbolically, for us we're given a powerful opportunity to manifest life changes. We stand at a crossroads when we start something new where we get to choose what kind of life it is that we want to create. Here on this day, January 1st, we'll come together and we are now the manifestation of everything that we have thought, felt, experienced, and dreamed of. And where will our journey continue from here? According to Archangel Michael, it will continue in faith. This morning I meditated with Archangel Michael and I was asking him what kinds of messages we should share with all of you for this new year. And one of the themes that he expressed was faith. According to Archangel Michael, from the angel's spiritual perspective, faith is holding space for the presence of the divine in our lives. Be steadfast in holding space for the heavenly creator to dwell in your heart, in your consciousness, in your body, and in your lives. For remaining close to that heavenly source in this manner allows you to never stray from your pure understanding of the truth. Never will illusions of fear or negativity or maybe drama of this world really touch you and your precious sacred heart as long as you hold strong and truly in the faith that you have in the divine. Life is sacred, Archangel Michael wants us to feel, know, and understand that with each and every one of our personal life experiences because each of our lives are precious, holy, and held truly sacred in the heart of God. Each of our thoughts, feelings, hopes, desires, and dreams, according to the angels, are held like precious treasures in the heart of heaven. And the angels, they watch over these things in our lives with a love and devotion that is absolutely boundless and unfathomable. The angels believe in our triumph as a collective. They believe in our power to ascend into the peaceful, higher consciousness and intelligence that arises from love and really love alone. So have faith, Archangel Michael tells us for this year. Have faith as you travel the human journey. Hold space for divine love in your heart in your mind, and your soul, each day, each night, through each joy, through each struggle, in each question, and certainly in each answer. Divine love is the source of your intelligence to understand the highest and holiest of truths, according to the angels. That we are already absolute divine perfection. Enlightenment or Christ consciousness, or one with, oneness with the universe, or nirvana, or any other kind of name that we want to give the idea of that union with the divine, they are yours already right now. So still the mind, open the heart, and have faith, and you will be able to experience and become it, to become that union. Our perfect union with the divine is a gift that's given by our creator, and a gift given by our creator can never be ungiven. So no matter what kind of earthly illusions might offer maybe a distraction from that, you're always going to be perfectly and eternally one with the highest divine. That's the core essence of your being. So breathe deeply, be at peace, and allow your heart to be aware of that truth. When we allow divine love to dwell in every step of our journey, we align ourselves with the true source of receiving all that we want. Each and every desire that we have as human beings is in truth a desire for God 
to become the oneness we are with God in truth and to let that spread and shine throughout the earth. How can we dwell in divine love each day? Well, according to Archangel Michael, we can do it by choosing to forgive the world. Forgive the human ego and all of the illusions of fear it has only really seemed to create. Go beyond fighting the ego through pure forgiveness as the answer to each pain or each challenge or each question of the heart and mind that we face in this year, in this life. Choose to be steadfast as well in abstaining from thoughts of judgment, harm, or negativity, or anything else that takes us away from our true state of consciousness. Continue to be steadfast in holding space for your faith, your closeness to source that allows you to perceive and understand love, goodness, and truly innocence at the heart of each living being. Let that awareness create automatic forgiveness for the world that keeps you so one with light, so one with feeling good that peace and happiness cannot but follow you everywhere you go. We'd like to empower you with the knowledge that your dreams can come true and that it's through love that you will manifest them. And the angels want you to know that they are protecting you, your loved ones, and they're protecting your dreams for this life. So do connect with your angels often and invite them in as you embark on a path of true self-discovery this year. The discovery of that inner perfect divine self within that always dwells in heaven. It's part of you now. In channeling the angels, I was also guided to talk about the number 2017. First, the number 20, which will be with us when we write down our date for the next 83 years. So for most of us, um, it will be for most, if not for the rest of our lives, that we'll see that number. It's a number that represents divine service. In numerology, the number 20 is a number of compassion, service, sensitivity, and humanitarian efforts. The number two represents the creation of peace between two different entities or polarities. Two is like a reference to the dualistic world that we live in now and which we experience things such as both light and dark. We experience opposite polar extremes. Two represents the creation of harmony between those two opposing forces of nature and of consciousness. Two is a number associated with the nurturing power also of divine feminine, of the mother, and facilitating a perfect balance and a peace between divine feminine and divine masculine. Two is therefore a number that represents faith. Have faith, this number tells us, because everything is working out with blessings and perfect balance or perfect harmony for both sides involved in any situation you're thinking about. Now also when the number zero follows a number, it simply strengthens its vibration. Zero is a number of God and of source, which is why we see the number two strengthened followed by zero and we get a very strong focus on that balance and peace to the extent that it represents a sole purpose for humanitarian compassion, healing, love, and that high level of love and healing that will exist at the collective. Next, we have the number 17, a brand new number with a new resonance for our new year. The number 17 is a number that lets us know that we're on the right path for our soul's purpose. 17 is a symbol of humanity dwelling in both the spiritual and material worlds and of creating fusion between those worlds which results in the fulfillment of life purpose. In numerology, seven is a seeker of knowledge and of truth. And it's the number that looks for that deeper truth of life that lies at the heart of existence. 2017 is therefore a big year for life purpose and self-discovery truth. 
Today I've pulled 12 cards representing each month of the year, so let's check them out and see what kind of guidance the angels have for us this year. So let's go ahead and start with our first card representing the month of January. The first card is the counseling card. Counseling. So there are a few messages that are coming up um, right off the bat for this message of counseling. The first one that I'm receiving is for all of us that the month of January is a really great time for contemplation, self-discovery, and a life review. Going within and seeking the counsel or higher advice of your inner wisdom, of the higher self. This is also a sign that this is a really good time to receive an outside view or a fresh new sort of view on anything that you're going through or working on in your life. And then the other message that I was hearing out about, about this card as well, since 2017 is our year of life purpose, that if you feel guided and called to be a counselor, to be someone who gives advice or who simply guides another person in any way, in any shape that um, that path may take, um, then this is your time to really set some high intentions for your life purpose as a counselor. Let's go to our second card for the month of February. February's card is prioritize. Prioritize with Archangel Metatron. So I think that this fits in really beautifully with the sort of sequence of guidance or events that we have. So we're in January, um, our guides, our angels were telling us to go within and to find some self-discovery, to seek wisdom, counseling from our higher selves or from the outside fresh new perspective. The month of February, the guidance is then to take that fresh new perspective, take that guidance that you've been receiving and to prioritize how you are going to manifest those things out in the real world or to prioritize perhaps your highest guidance for inner peace is what I'm getting. A sense that when you consult that spirit within, when you have faith and you grow in that relationship that you have already, again, naturally, with God, with Source, and you make that divine love we were talking about in the beginning, a strong um, guiding force that takes you into every experience and decision you make in your life, that it can have the power to prioritize your life magically and beautifully so that you can really start to see beautiful results, beautiful healing, beautiful progress in all areas of your life. So February is your month to get organized, prioritize, get motivated about maintaining life changes or maybe even implementing new life changes. Let's check out our third card for the month of March. In March, we have the problem solving card. Problem solving card. The message that I'm getting for the month of March is that this is going to be a time that offers you a big, beautiful opportunity to purge out or to release something that is no longer serving you on your path anymore. It's a time in which perhaps if you find yourself facing any challenges, maybe any dramas or seeing any fear or negativity out in the world, this is your opportunity to rise above and transcend these things in your life by focusing on that, again, inner priority of being one with divine love, seeing all people and situations through the eyes of divine love, and letting that really, really take the, um, the highest precedent in your life, letting that, that divine love lead you forward to overcome old obstacles and to release the old things that you don't need anymore. I'm also hearing the angels say that this is a card of resolution, too, that you will find a lot of resolution to old um, issues and maybe old maybe relationship things. There's forgiveness, there is positivity, there is culminating resolution that comes in at this time. So that feels very freeing. I like it. Let's go ahead and check out what our fourth card will be for the month of April. So the fourth card is Integrity. The integrity card. This is a card that is once again telling you to really stick with your inner truth. 
That's such a strong theme that we have going on this year. Stick with your inner truth. Let divine love, let your search to create peace, fulfillment, and real joy in life keep you on you know, your own sort of straight and narrow path of, of being at peace and of fulfilling your purpose. The integrity card tells us that when you stay true to your feelings, your priorities, your needs, then automatically easily you're going to find that you are overcoming things that may be used to challenge you. You are making a lot of beautiful life changes and it feels like a lot of positive changes in relationships or in the way that you re relate with others is coming about as a result. That's definitely a really powerful thing because once again I'm getting this strong feeling of freedom that comes from having strong integrity or prioritizing integrity. It is more important this year for you, in other words, to be authentic than it is to necessarily be perfect or to be um, trying to you know, do things just for other people, just to please other people, or to sort of fulfill some sort of outside expectation of what you think the outside world wants you to be doing. This is a time to let go of all of those things and once again, follow the inner wisdom and the inner truth with steadfast faith that you are on the right track with your life purpose and in everything that you're doing right now. And as long as you follow your convictions, your passions, your burning desires and your feelings, you cannot but say, succeed. You cannot but be led towards God, which means, of course, fulfillment, of course, being taken care of, of course, being happy and all those other things that, of course, we want to attract in our lives. So we've got beautiful messages going on so far this year in our first four months. Let's go ahead and see what the fifth month of May has to bring us this year. <gasps> Happily ever after. I like that card. Happily ever after. This is a card that says that the work that you did on yourself and on your life purpose path over the first four months of this year is really going to pay off right around May. There's this beautiful experience that you'll have where I'm feeling you kind of stepping into your power. I'm feeling you just confidently walking forward like you're blossoming. You're happy. You're confident. You're exactly who you are. You're doing what you want to do happily ever after. This is a time where you might be seeing the fruition of new opportunities that you are now holding in your hand or directly experiencing. And I'm also seeing a lot of happiness with the relationships in your life. There's, again, just a sense of resolution of any past conflict or worry. There's a sense of love, a sense of understanding and togetherness, um, which really does come from having integrity, which was the message from the month before. If you are willing to put your cards out, out on the table and be exactly who you are, express what you want, what you believe, what you need, what you feel, then you can't but create harmony in a relationship because Ultimately, if something is really good for you or is true for you, then it's going to create truth for the other person. It's going to support them experiencing truth and them being also able to pursue what truly fulfills them. It just brings everybody into their highest harmony. So there's a lot of happiness, a lot of things that feel like you'll have to celebrate or be happy about in the month of May. That's always great news. All right, let's see what our sixth card has to tell us for the month of June. In June, we have the Freedom card. Oh my goodness, remember how I just kept saying in those first uh, four months or so, I keep getting this feeling of freedom. Well, now we've really, we really have that sense of freedom um, by June. So halfway through the year, again, there's this big feeling that you've started to culminate in manifesting some of the things that you've been looking for and working on, and you feel free from the worries or the burdens of the past. Another thing that I'm hearing loud and clear from your angels is the idea of freedom from debt, whether that be financial debt or even karmic debt. Um, there's just this sense of the old weight of the past being lifted off of you and you're brand new. It's sort of a time for rebirth. Um, so again, there's, you're still celebrating, you're still happy in the month of June, there's still a lot of great things going on, um, and uh, two, I'm feeling a sense of independence. It just keeps growing, that feeling of um, 
freedom and confidence that we've been getting this whole time. And it feels like it just says, I am independent and I couldn't be happier to be independent and free and on my own path. So what a beautiful message that is. Let's go ahead and see then what our seventh card has to say for the month of July. Flow of prosperity, more good news for July. The flow of prosperity card is a card that tells us that there's not only a sense of learning life lessons as the culmination of some of the work that you've been doing over this year, not only a sense of happiness and relationships and different things like that, but also a sense of prosperity, abundance, joy, hope, and plenty in your physical, material, everyday kind of life experiences. This is a sign from your angels that says, Keep the faith and keep going on the path that you have chosen because it will support you financially. It will bring you the, um, the prosperity or the abundance that you need to keep going. Um, there is great abundance and opportunity, the angels are saying, when a human being aligns their sense of passion and purpose with their action, with their choice of how to live. So live your passion this year and Take the guided action steps you are given because the result is prosperity for you. A lot to celebrate this summer. What a great thing to look forward to. So let's go to our eighth card for the month of August. We have the tranquility card. Tranquility. So there's a few things that this card is telling me. Um, the first feeling that I'm getting is that if you had a lot of high activity and high energy going on all throughout the summer, that this is a really great time to rest. This is a great time to reap the benefits of some of the things that you've been doing and pushing forward by taking a step back, living a very simple, peaceful, um, quiet and still life during this time because it feels as if it gives you the strength and the power to step forward for even more high energy and activity and accomplishment that will be coming on um, as we look into the last part of the year. And I'm hearing just one other message for this card as well that the tranquility message says this is a great month, a great time for you to reconnect with your spiritual roots very deeply. This will be a great time for retreat and for focusing on meditation or spending time out in nature, doing something that gets you close with the quiet, close with the stillness. Because in stillness, stillness is the place where we are able to feel the presence of God place where we're able to allow the present moment. And again, all of that beautiful kind of heavenly oneness we talked about at the beginning of the video, to be realized for you to experience. It comes out of the present moment. It comes out of quiet, stillness, peace. Meditate. Simplify your life. There's such peace in simplicity, tranquility, and quiet. Let's go ahead and see what our next card tells us. Our ninth card for the month of September says, Cycles and Rhythms. Cycles and Rhythms. The first thing I heard right as I turned over this card was you're about to begin a new cycle. So this might be a new cycle of manifestation um, where you've got maybe some new ideas that you're ready to run with. A lot of new creativity. Another thing that I'm hearing out of this message as well is to honor your energy levels, honor your body, Honor the ebb and flow of life as you go forward um, with any of these new ideas that you have. When you do that, you're helping to get your mind in the perfect mindset for manifest manifestation, which says that everything has a season. Everything has a time and place. There is a time to plant the seed and there is a time to reap the fruits sort of thing. So there are there are new planting of seeds that seem to be happening in the month of September. Now let's turn over our next card for the month of October. Card number 10. We have the Lovers card from Angel Tarot. Lovers. So the Lovers card is a card that's all about balance in our lives. Yes, it's about relationships, um, and you know that may very well come into play. There may be a focus on romantic relationships, 
partners and that sort of thing. Um, but it also represents a balance in the forces of your life. Remember we were talking about the number two, which actually um, is a, an important number when you're thinking of relationships, because you think of relationships, usually there's two people in them. Um, it's a representation of balance between two forces in your life, a balance perhaps in work and play is one thing that I'm hearing about that. Um, and just an overall sense of, again, honoring your energy levels, honoring divine timing, and letting things work out in their own way. That feels like it's a little bit of a carryover too from the message that we were getting um, in November with cycles and rhythms. Once again, just saying, honor the timing of things, honor the way that things are going. There is harmony in what you're doing now and ask for it, ask the angels for guidance in that. Let's turn over our 11th card for the month of November. In November, we have the love life card, love life. So the love life card tells us that there will indeed be some big relationship kinds of themes that might be coming up at this time. I'm hearing a few different themes from this as well. The angels are saying that this is going to be a time where you are perhaps working on the partnership that you're currently in, or if you're single, this will be a time in which you are preparing yourself for partnership in a beautiful way. There is a focus on a lot of joy, harmony, happiness, and healing in relationships and partnerships. This is also a time to clear away the past with any ex relationships that you've had going as far back as you would ever need to, to heal. That when you do this, it helps to release and clear you so that you are your most open and best when it comes to manifesting something new. You're not holding on to the baggage of the past, you're letting it go and you're clearing it in this month. Wow, I love that. We had the lovers in October followed by love life. So we'll see what that brings. That brings a lot of interesting guidance for relationships in those two months. Let's go ahead and see what our 12th and final card tells us for the month of December. December 2017 is a card that says share your gifts. Share your gifts. This is a time where I'm hearing the angels putting a lot of focus on the idea of service, on the idea of compassion for other people. It's interesting too because the month of December is a month that typically many people associate with giving. Um, you know, the holidays come up during that time and we think about things like that. This is also a time for you to really um, come out of the closet if there are any um, opinions, ideas, gifts, or life purpose things that you wish to express to the world or to those around you in a bigger way. I'm really hearing the angels say confidently step forward and share who you are, what you have to offer. It's beautiful and it's meaningful. Again, remember, if you have a passion or your natural truth is something that you feel really strong about, You've got to share it. You've got to bring it out into the world and let people see your light shine. It only can bring more happiness, more love, more balance, more faith to the world. Who knows, you might be inspiring someone beautifully by sharing your gift, focusing on giving, focusing on sharing what you have, the light that you have inside. So those are our angel messages for 2017. Thank you so much for tuning in and enjoying these messages with me. I just love to connect with each and every one of you, and I look forward to doing so this year. I'm going to be actually adding this particular reading to the services that I will offer each of you individually. If you would like a personal 12-month reading, whether it be for your birthday starting any time of the year or maybe even starting for the new year, you can check out my website at www.seraphim.com for more information on how to receive one of those from me and where you can also read about my healing sessions and angel readings that I offer through Skype, phone, or email. Also, you can connect with me on Facebook or Twitter. The links will be in the description below. And know until next time that you are so very, very loved and so very blessed. Happy New Year, everyone. I love you. Bye.